joining me now is one of the signers of that statement on the possibility of genocide in Gaza, Omar Bartov, professor of Holocaust and Genocide Studies at Brown University. Professor Bartov, who is an Israeli-American, has been described by the U.S. Holocaust Memorial Museum as, quote, one of the world's leading specialists on the subject of genocide. Professor Bartov, thank you for joining me on the show today. I wish it wasn't under these circumstances. Even a lot of people who are critical of the Israeli government, critical of the war on Gaza, they hear the word genocide and say, hold on, that's a step too far, that's hyperbole, this isn't Rwanda. You are a world-renowned expert on genocide and an Israeli yourself. What makes this, in your view, possibly a genocide? Well, thank you for having me. And indeed, uh, this is not the best uh, occasion for any of us. Um, Look, I mean, I think that the situation we're facing now, as the statement that you read earlier that I co-signed uh, indicates, is one where the possibility of genocide is staring us in the face. Um, you, you have cited many statements made by Israeli politicians, by Israeli generals, uh, which indicate an intent. Uh, one of the most difficult uh, aspects uh, to prove in genocide. And in fact, uh, these leaders have used statements that appear to show an intent to genocide, to commit genocide. My own view is, as far as I can tell, uh, being here and not on the ground there, and depending on reports like most of us, is that what is happening right now in Gaza uh, can quite clearly be seen as war crimes, potentially also crimes against humanity, um, possibly um, may become genocide. I don't think that what is happening there right now is genocide. And there are conflicting statements also from commanders on the ground who are claiming that they are using a great deal of military force, but what they're trying to do is to kill Hamas operative and they are trying not to kill civilians, although, as you've said, they have not done so very successfully. Um, but I think it's very important to, to stress that the danger of genocide is right there, and that as if things progress uh, as they are going right now, um, what we are seeing now may become much worse. There are also very threatening statements that you haven't cited which have to do with an intent to ethnic cleansing. Uh, one statement that became public is from the Ministry of Intelligence, which is yes. not a particularly important ministry right now, but that is talking about removing all the uh, Palestinian population from Gaza uh, to the Sinai Peninsula, to the Egyptian side of the border. That would clearly be an indication of ethnic cleansing. And one thing we know about genocide is that it often begins with ethnic cleansing. In fact, that's what happened in the Holocaust. So what we are seeing is a very, very dangerous moment. And if no stop is um, brought right now, uh, things may very quickly deteriorate. So, Professor, some defenders of Israel point not just to steps taken by the Israeli military to ostensibly reduce civilian casualties, like dropping leaflets, telling Gaza to evacuate, but also to the fact that the Palestinian population in both the West Bank and Gaza has increased over the decades. So how can Israel be behaving in a genocidal way, they say? The British writer Simon Sebag Montefiore, in a very viral essay for The Atlantic last week, said, demographic shrinkage is one obvious marker of genocide, and yet the Palestinian population has grown, he says, and continues to grow. Is that a fair defense? No, I don't think so. No. Um, look, um, one one issue with um, genocide, and that's um, when you refer to Russia and Ukraine was quite relevant, is um, uh, in the case of Russia and Ukraine, Russia refuses to accept the, the, the possibility of there being an independent Ukrainian state. It doesn't want to kill all Ukrainians. It wants to actually destroy the idea of, of a Ukrainian nation. And Israel um, has had some agreements with the, with the PLO, uh, with the um, Palestinian political leadership, but by and large, there is a very strong push in Israel with the Netanyahu, the multiple Netanyahu administrations to make the Palestinians somehow go away. Uh, this is actually not happening only 
uh, in Gaza, but also on the West Bank, where violence by settlers protected by the military and often with the help of the, of the military are uh, uh, increasingly yeah. exercising violence against the Palestinians there. And there are dangers, and many Palestinians would say so, of a second Nakba, of, of another yes. expulsion of Palestinians. So in that sense, numbers, um, you know, people in Gaza, um, I actually what? served in Gaza many years ago as a soldier uh, in, the, in the 1970s, the population was 350,000, and now it's between two and two and a half million people. So the population has grown, conditions have greatly deteriorated. Um, yes. Gaza has been besieged for 16 years now by the Israeli authorities. And Let if me... the intention is to move people out of their territory, then what you can say is that there's uh, an indication of ethnic cleansing. Let me ask you this, Professor. What would you say to Israelis, to fellow Jews who say it's outrageous to accuse us of genocide, given what we've endured in our history, and especially when we're fighting against Hamas, which has expressed genocidal intent towards us? What would you say? Yeah. So the first, the, the first thing I would say is that, indeed, Hamas has expressed uh, genocidal intent, and the massacre that, that it carried out was clearly a war crime and a crime against humanity. Uh, so I don't think there's any question about that. To me, what, as, as someone who has uh, studied and written on the Holocaust for decades now, what is most outrageous is that an Israeli government, the government of the only Jewish state in the world, is uh, pursuing policies that can easily be identified as policies of, um, um, of, of war crimes, of crimes against humanity, and is making genocidal statements. That is the, the most outrageous aspect about this government, a government that was um, of a state that was created in the wake of the Holocaust, that yes. has said repeatedly, never again. And never again is not only never again against Jews, but never again, never again genocide. One last question, Professor Bartov. It's not just Israeli politicians engaging in what sounds to many people like genocidal rhetoric, and I mentioned some of that a moment ago. You have U.S. politicians, Republican politicians, like Senators Lindsey Graham and Tom Cotton talking about levelling Gaza, bouncing the rubble. And yesterday, GOP Congressman Brian Maas said this. I would encourage the other side to not so lightly throw around the idea of innocent Palestinian civilians, as is frequently said. Uh, I don't think we would so lightly throw around the term innocent Nazi civilians during World War II. How would you describe that rhetoric about Gaza, about the Palestinians emanating from the GOP here in the United States? Well, in fact, even the president of the state of Israel um, said that we, we should see all Palestinians in Gaza, the population of Gaza, as responsible for the acts of Hamas. And I should say that in, during World War II, um, uh, British and American politicians very carefully distinguished between the Nazis, um, various Nazi organizations, the German military, and the German population, and never talked about the German population as being Nazi. There were many Nazis there, but the point of it was that after the war, you could rebuild Germany, which is what was done. Uh, and not um, eradicate it. And so this kind of rhetoric is irresponsible um, and potentially murderous. Professor Omar Bartov, we will have to leave it there. Thank you so much for your analysis. Thank you.